Accurate labor costs are essential to having your project be on track. Here's how to do that in Cost Tracker for Tempo Timesheets. Cost Tracker gives you a clear and simple picture of your project's financial health. And an important way of making that picture clearer is by setting the cost and billing rates for your team members. Cost Tracker offers different ways to set rates depending on how much accuracy you need. From a simple default rate to rates based on a role, and to exact rates for each team member, even at different dates. I'm a project manager here at Lunar Industries, and I need to track labor costs and revenue for a Helium 3 mining app that we're developing. Let me show you how I set all these rates as I create a cost tracker project. Rates are all about team members and their roles, so I need to check a few things before I get started. I'm in the Tempo settings where I'll open the Team Roles page and check that I have the roles that I need for my team. These roles are used in the Tempo teams for both Tempo Timesheets and Tempo Planner, so they've already been created and are in use. In fact, I'll check my team called Lunar Apps Dev to see which role is assigned to which team member. Cost Tracker doesn't automatically assign roles to my team members, so I'll need to do that after I create my Cost Tracker project. And I'll head over there now. I'll open up Cost Tracker, and I'll start with setting the rates based on team role. Up here on the right, I click Global Settings, and then see the role rates. These rates are applied to all team members who are assigned a particular role, such as developers, UX designers, or QA. And this is a quick way for me to get more accurate estimates than using a simple default rate for all team members. The roles here are automatically populated with the roles that we just saw on the Team Roles page, so that's why I checked there first. I'll start out with my developers and add a cost rate for them, and also a billing rate, since some of their work is billable for our customer. Of course, you don't need to set the billing rate if you're not tracking revenue. Now these rates will automatically be applied to all team members who are assigned the developer role, but only in the cost tracker projects that I create from this point on. If you have existing cost tracker projects, don't worry. These role rates won't automatically replace the rates that you have already set for a team member who has this role. Now I'm ready to create my cost tracker project. So I go back to the project list and click Create Project up here. I'll add a name and select the JQL filter as usual. And then set the default hourly rate. This rate is used for all team members who don't have a team role assigned, which is my team at the moment. I click Create, and the scope opens up where I can see the labor cost. And this is automatically calculated using the default rate for the number of hours worked by my team members. The rates that I set for the developer role are not used yet because I haven't assigned the developer role to any of my team members, which I will do now. I'll go to the configuration up on the right, and then to roles and rates on the left. I see that all my team members are assigned the default role of member. I'll assign the developer role to David, and say yes to apply the role rate that I added earlier you see that the default cost rate is replaced by the developer role rate. I'll do the same for Erica, who's the other dev on my team, so that she's also using the developer role rate. Now if I go back to the scope, I can see that the labor costs are higher, but already more accurate because I'm using the role rates. Now I'll go back and fine tune David's rates for this particular project. Notice that this is the current rate being used. He's kind of a superstar, so I'll make his rates higher than is used for the general developer role. As the project goes along, my team members' rates may change for any number of reasons, such as salary increases, inflation, or changes in their contract. I know that David's costs are going to increase on January 1st next year. So I'll click the plus sign to add a new rate that will be effective starting on that date. And this is known as a flexible rate in Cost Tracker. When January 1st rolls around, Cost Tracker will automatically pull this rate, and it will become the current rate to use for David. 
I really like how these flexible rates help me track labor costs with even greater precision. Finally, I'll add the billing piece of the puzzle to my cost tracker project by turning on revenue tracking up here. And I see the billing rate column up here. I could set an hourly billing rate to use for all my team members, but only my developers, David and Erica, have billable hours in this case, so I don't actually need a default billing rate. But remember that I set a billing rate for the developer role at the beginning? That's the rate that's automatically used for David and Erica here. Since David is so awesome, I have to increase his billing rate here so that it's higher above his cost rate, including the billing rate that he will be using starting on January 1st. With these rates set up, I'm going to check my scope again. I can see that the labor costs are even more accurate now with David's individual rate set. And I can see the total revenue, which shows up as a purple line on the graph, and the number of billable hours, which are less than the total number of hours worked. To finish setting up my project, I'll go to the role rates and fill in the correct values for the rest of the team roles. And I'll go back to the Roles and Rates page to assign the correct role to each of my team members so that they'll use these role rates. With everything set up now, I'll do a final check on the scope, which now shows me accurate labor costs for my project. The best thing is that the next time I create a cost tracker project, the labor costs will be pretty accurate right from the start because my team members will automatically have the same roles as before and the role rates that I set will be automatically applied to their logged hours. So that saves me a lot of time, which makes me happy. So that's how you can set role rates to quickly get accurate labor costs, and how you can change individual rates and add flexible rates to get the most accurate costs over the life of your project. Thanks for watching, and make sure to check out the other cost tracker videos and our help center for more information.